Hello everybody, welcome back. Today it is The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Roffey. Now, how did this book come into my possession? Because I had not planned on reading this. In fact, I didn't know much about this book. I think in the summer, Vintage Books were doing a five for four deal on their website and I bought it. And because I hadn't read any of the books in the five bundle and I thought, oh, I'll you know, read them when I'm away. What, what drew me to this book was this. I hadn't heard much about this book, but I saw that it won the Costa Book Award for, twen um, Costa Book Award for 2020. And I thought, oh, well, that must be quite good. And I saw it as a book about mermaids. And it's about a mermaid that falls in love with a man, a fisherman. She comes on land. Then some bad people try and get her. And I'm like, this is splash, isn't it? And so I had this very idealistic, romantic, I mean, I love the film Splash, but mostly because of John Candy. But I had this very idealistic, romantic comedy, um, Pretty Mermaid, uh, love story, but they can't be together, so sad. That is not what is happening in The Mermaid of Black Conch. My goodness, Monique is wow she has taken a fairy tale and at times it's like a horror story and at times it's as heartbreaking actually as the original little mermaid but it's it's contemporary it's 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 vicious at times it is curious it is revealing um fantastic fantastic so i read this book and i put it up on instagram uh saying oh my god am i like the last person to read this this book is phenomenal and i got two response i got two kinds of responses first was like oh my god where have you been victoria of course this is amazing and second was oh my god i've just read it on your recommendation and i'm recommending it to all my friends so here i am to recommend to you the mermaid of black conch so why am i so excited about this this book is set in the Caribbean, a Caribbean island, and there's, I think in the 1970s, and there's a lonely fisherman called David, and each day he goes out and tries to catch some fish. And he sees and forms an emotional attachment with a mermaid that he finds in the waters. What's extraordinary about this mermaid is she's not Daryl Hannah. She is a mermaid of immense power a physical presence that's appropriate for someone who has been a fish for hundreds of years. Powerful, huge muscles, um, great thickness of the body and really matted, grim hair, crawling with sea creatures and just not Hollywood at all, but actually a beautiful woman in a physique that is not considered pretty in current feminine, ideal, idealised feminine beauty, which of course is what Monique, Monique really grabs at, is she's going to create a mermaid that is a woman that was appropriate for a fish and that is still something of immense beauty. What then happens is there's some American tourists who um, on one of their raucous, let's get really drunk and go fishing, trips out to sea, accidentally catch this mermaid and drag her into a local village, a small village, and this sets in a whole chain of events in motion. The first, I have to say, the first 30 pages of this book, when the American tourists are capturing the mermaid and bringing her onto their boat, I actually had to put the book down. It's horrific. Monique has deliberately written it as an assault, um, and an extremely graphic assault. And I thought that that has to be one of the most powerful passages I've ever read in a book. But I warn you now, it's particularly that's something that is of a concern to you and that's something that you will not enjoy, uh, that might be a trigger for you, I warn you now. But it is brilliant that Monique has taken this um, and made it ugly and made the bring out the vicious misogyny, the um, sexualised um, graphic... Uh, treatment of a woman at the hands of a huge number of male fishermen um, it is it is it is terrible it is a terrible passage 
of a really extended struggle to get a huge mermaid onto the boat and what she has to go through as she is taken really to the brink of death. Uh, traumatic. And she is dragged back to the coast where in this village she's strung up by her tail and the men go out drinking. Now, from here on in, it's an amazing new person in town type style type plot that Monique has taken to bring to life this village, this coastal village of uh, with a legacy of colonialism, legacy of racism, power struggles, power dynamics. And in, in the middle of it, David, who frees his mermaid at, in the middle of the night when all the men have gone drinking. It is the tenderest love story of what it is to love, what it is to share space with someone you can't communicate with, who is so different from you and who teaches you about life in a way that you hadn't seen. And then Monique wraps this all up into an ex <laughs> quite brilliant subplot around myths and legends and where that a mermaid belongs in the sea. And that's really appropriate for the Caribbean, which has a very strong sense of there being a strong link between myths and culture and between the sea and nature and gods and the climate and weathers and farming and agriculture and just how everything has to be in balance and belongs where it has to belong. And so you have this trigger, this mermaid becomes a trigger for a reckoning throughout the entire community, whether it's its colonial past, whether it's its greed and corruption, or whether it's search for love. And all in this book, oh my God, the mermaid of black conch is sad and bittersweet, but at times it is such fury, such passion, such dynamic action, and some great characters. The subplots Monique has invested in have been fantastic, particularly around an old plantation owner and a corrupt policeman. And just, they have their own subplots and their own understandings and their learnings from the mermaid on love relationships, moving on forgiveness, or even coming to terms with loving someone who's just gonna be a bit different from what you wanted. It's amazing, and I sound like what I've just said is glib, but it isn't. This book doesn't almost seem to warrant its pretty cover. It's, it's so much more incisive. It's so much more, if I said literary, it sounds condescending. I don't need to think this is a piece of obvious commercial fiction. It isn't, it's fantastic. And I have to commend Monique Roffey without hesitation. This is a fantastic book. And if you are looking for something a little smaller and a little different and a little challenging, but fantastic and easy to read, The Mermaid of Black Conch, can I recommend it times a hundred? It's fantastic. Enjoy it as much as I did and those that I've recommended it to have as well.